I don't know if Brother Brian Do is here. I can see him here, but I can't um, hear him. Okay, it says you can't hear me, but I, I can't hear you. So, okay, you should be able to hear me now. Yeah, yeah, I right? can hear you now. Yeah, salam alaikum, brother. Okay, go alaikum salam, salam alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So, all praises are due to Allah, one of Allah. We thank Allah, one of Allah, for the gift of life. And uh, my dear witness in his oneness. I will pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make today's session an easy one for the facilitators and um, the participants as well. We pray that Allah would, um, you know, make this session a beneficial one for each and every one of us. I will pray to Allah to shield us from this uh, global pandemic. And I will pray to Allah to also provide us in and for us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Yawmidin. Yaka na'abudu wa yaka na'asthaim idin asu wa ta'u mustakim. For that um, opening tour. So we call on Brother Cousin Madini, um, former mayor of La Secre Campus, to, to give us um, the opening recitation. هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نقطة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنكرا وإما كفورا إنا أعتدنا للكافرين سلاسل وغلالا وسعيرا إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إن إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا فوقاهم الله شر ذلك اليوم ولقاهم نضرة وسرورا وجزاهم بما صبروا جنة وحريرا اللهم اجعلنا من الصابرين اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن آمين um, Jazakallah Quran, brother. Um, thank you so much for the opening recitation. May Almighty Allah accept all of the things we want to do today as an act of ibadah and then make it all beneficial for us, inshallah. Um, so as I was giving the background before, um, the first brother that will be speaking with us now is Brother Deji Balogun. He's the CEO of Apex. And then he will be talking about why you should consider on that industry that side engineering and then how you can identify those on that industries where engineers are currently thriving and how you can key into those other industries. So, um, Buddha Dijibalogun. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, uh, Brother Abigafra. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be amidst my fellow brothers. I looked at the participant list and uh, saw quite a number of names that we were on campus around the same time. Uh, it's a pleasure to be connected. Uh, Alhamdulillah for sparing our lives, and I would pray that it continues to spare our lives and keep us one, our brotherhood. 
So we're going to be sharing, um, you know, I like to call it sort of like the rebel story uh, for so, some of us that have chosen uh, very early on to rebel against um, engineering um, and how we sort of parted that journey and, um, you know, what's, how, what, what can be learned from it uh, by other uh, uh, our brothers as well. Uh, first, I would just like to mention that, you know, it, we all know that life has no defined path. Uh, everybody has a coder that he assigned to, and we pray that Allah gives us the best in this world and the air after. Um, so these things, we can only share experiences so that we can learn and we can apply. Sometimes we apply it in the same field. Uh, sometimes we just have a few sentences that we pick up and we can apply it or we can even pass it on to others. Uh, maybe they, we wouldn't find it applicable to us. So I felt it important to sort of put that caveat out first. Um, and then we'll, dip, we'll delve into um, it in sort of like 15 to 20 minutes. So the way, the, way, the, way, the way I like to look at it is first to say, why did I move on? At what point did I decide to leave engineering? Uh, just start with that, my personal story. Um, and then move into uh, what, you know, what should you look out for? Um, as you decide, you know, to build your career or as you decide to pivot uh, your career. Um, and then thought is to just say what, you know, what, what, are, what are other opportunities out there? Uh, but I know that's sort of infinite. Uh, but I would say fields that I've also seen in the experience in the last few years where I've seen a lot of engineers also excel in and why I think they could have excelled. So that sort of will be the three part series to uh providing some insights um as we go along this journey so first i you know for for anybody that knew me on campus i always say i had three personalities on campus uh in last week where uh i had my musk identity um and i was very active i think then we used to say muskite and uh muskite association of nigeria sort of was part of our jokes um i had my politics student union identity uh, we were in the campus at a time when it was actually quite volatile, and then we had a lot of uh, backs and forths with um, authorities. Uh, then I had my sort of class identity. And uh, part of what I did, you know, if you were in mechanical engineering in the days um, 2000 to 2005, 6, 7, those were the days where we had a lot of parents, lecturers. Um, may Allah forgive all of us. Um, and, you know, we, we had our identity that and how I found. And between these three identities, I think those things shaped a lot of, um, you know, our career path, but also family life uh, beyond campus. Um, I, I, I definitely wanted to do engineering while on campus. Um, I chose an engineering firm and I was very active. Uh, when I wanted to do my internship, um, 400 level uh, industrial training, as we used to call it. Um, I did it at Dangote Cement at that time, and it was very interesting. Um, but at that point, after the internship, after the industrial training, was the part where I started to see that um, if you dimension the, the difference between engineering and technology, um, and I started to see that a lot of the rules out there that was available was actually very technical so you pretty much was just a maintenance support repairs um rather than design creative you know and th that sort of started to influence my choices as i progressed um final year project was another pivotal point uh we did a very interesting project i think it was the it is actually the first uh project that was done across multiple departments so that's a project we had um, um, we had some students from electronics and computer engineering work with us on mechanical engineering because it was sort of like a mechatronics and we needed to do sensors, do some machine learning programming and the likes. So it was a joint project then um, and that was very interesting and that was sort of what I really wanted to be able to pivot into. But the more I researched into it to look at opportunities around design, mechatronics, um, automation, I saw that there were very few opportunities. And you know, at that point, as we started moving towards the final years, um, you know, I had to make a choice. Would I continue as an engineer or would I 
or would I um or would I go back to uh, business, which sort of was my second uh, best, you know, area of interest. I also spent a lot of time, you know, pursuing business uh, while a student. Um, so that, that sort of was the point, first point of true. As I graduated, I got into then doing business full time for a few years, uh, then decided to go and do the MBA. As I went into the MBA, I still carried my love for engineering. I remember when I wanted to do then the internship, and this was now 2009 after graduating 2006, 2007. Um, I still chose to go and intern at a, I, I chose to go and intern at a um, engineering firm. I went to Costaris Motors um, as an option for internship. Um, and then I went to the factory um, in, uh, I think it was somewhere on the way to Lasso. And it just was a lot of chaos. And, um, you know, when I, there, there was then directed to the head office in VI. And when I got to the head office in VI, I found out that everybody I met there, there was no single engineer. All the engineers were left in the factory. And everybody that was on the head office in the nice place had nothing to do with engineering. So that sort of was like, okay, so this is not, not going to work for me. I ended up intending in Unilever. Um, and I worked in sales. The last opportunity was right after the MBA. Um, you know, I, was, I completed the MBA from Lagos Business School, and I still had that thing for engineering. And I think that was sort of the last straw. So I had um, amongst a few interviews that I did, one of the very early ones that I really pushed very far off was uh, with Rekit Bekiza. So it was a plant uh, manager role. Um, and I'd applied and there were a few people, experienced engineering and a few other people. Um, and I went all the way to Agbara uh, to do the interview. It was a very long drive to get to Agbara. We did it, we had finished uh, a written interview. I was on my way leaving. And then they called back and said, you know, would you wait back? We like your scores, uh, stay over till the following morning for a verbal interview. So I had a five month verbal interview. And um, at that interview, I had a lot of questions and a lot of people, part of, a very strong part of it was a half of the panel, about three of the five-man panel, um, had a view that I was so much of a manager than an engineer. And the interview was around, okay, so when you have a plan failure, what do you do? My argument, um, I, my answer was contrary. My view was, look, my problem, biggest problem on the plant are people problems, not smashing problems. Massive problems are predictable. So I went all that long and I got the job. Then I had to do my final interview with the supply chain director. Um, and at that point, I had made my mind that I wasn't going to take the job. I was going to go for other things, uh, mostly main business. But the guy really wanted me. He said he had a similar profile, studied mechanical engineering, did an MBA, and he's here, the supply chain director, that it feels like I will spend a few years on the plant and then pivot. Um, so we went back and forth, and at that point, I was like, no, this was not it for me. Um, and primarily because I felt like the decision makers, even in an engineering business, were not engineers. Um, they, could be, they were not practicing engineers. They could have been engineers in training, and that always helps. Uh, but the role that they performed wasn't an engineering role. It was more of a management role. And I chose to go for management and then apply it to any field where I found. And that was sort of how, what shaped my career uh, leading into the MBA and post the MBA. And I just wanted to set that as a context. Now, when you look at uh, what, are, what are the things that um, a, a career should do uh, for you? Um, so one is it needs to give you um, growth opportunities. Uh, two, it needs to pay your bills, uh, you know, give you cash in hand. Three, it needs to give you uh, sort of like a fulfillment. And fulfillment on that is, is your religious desires, your desire to keep relationships with your brethren, your desire to continue to be a practicing and good Muslim. And you know, all of that, I put it under fulfillment. And these three things are very important um, things you need to consider when you want to make any career move, either early career, mid or, or advanced career decisions. How does it affect my growth potential? Pretty much how will, what will be my capacity to earn when I exit this role into the next role? The second is how much take home do I earn today? 
and how much will this will this cash really take me home? And the third is how fulfilled I am. A lot of times, a lot of our decisions are around the first cash, uh, but ultimately the cash part is actually the least in terms of priority. Being fulfilled is a very important part as a human being, as a Muslim, uh, and also being able to grow is extremely important because you know the faster you grow, the higher you get to, rather than having a great start, but then having a very slow growth uh, afterwards. Uh, so these three things always are very important um, as you want to make your course, whether you're an engineer or whether you want to pivot into an engineer. So the, the, the next part of what I'll try to say is how do you then uh, pivot if you choose to pivot on? And it just depends on where you are um, in the stage of your career. So first, as they almost a rule, almost always every engineer or every successful engineer becomes a manager. So if you look at your career trajectory, even if you stay in an engineering factory uh, on a plan, so you move from engineering into project management, and then from project management, you move into general management. And when you get to general management, you're pretty much handling the business side of things. Um, and uh, so I think ultimately we are all managers. Um, you know, at, at, you know, it depends on the time that we choose to then get to playing that role. The second part of what you also need to look at is to say, um, you know, how do I, you know, if you're, if you're at the early stage, um, then it's easy to move across almost any field. You know, you could go from engineering to uh, accounting. Finance is one very interesting part that I've seen a whole lot of engineers. In fact, some of the most, um, the best uh, finance professionals, um, investment bankers, are engineers and there are certain reasons for that one of it one of it one of the reasons is um engineers understand how to think complicated um so if, you, if you've ever done a laplace you know in my entire life one of the hardest thing i had to do was laplace transformation so if you ever can do laplace transformation in my view you can solve any problem in life <laughs> um you know you know think of matrix you know, four by four matrices and all of those differential equations and all those complicated things that we either needed to cram or to understand. And just thinking of how do you apply that into being able to break things down from complicated to complex, from complex to complicated, and from complicated to simple. Very easy, very similar pattern. So which makes um, also ability to be able to, so one of, you know, when you're doing in mechanical engineering, for instance, Or even in, in a, an assembly drawing as a mechanical engineer, you know, you have to think abstracts and you have to be able to conceive, create dimensions, create all the members, and then put all the members together, draw each of the member in 2D, but also draw each of the member in 2D, but also be able to then draw them and render them in 3D. Um, now, this is abstract imagination, and that's sort of the core of finance. When you're building, finance uh, when you're building a business model you have to look and make a five-year projections think about what would what are all the variables that will change over time and how do you create scenarios and linkages that will be able to then make it work so when you then tweak this and you make this change how does it affect every other part of the old model. So those are core parts of finance and those are parts of where um, engineers are actually very well positioned to be able to drive things. Uh, project management is one other one. Agriculture is another one. Uh, my job stands half partly in finance, partly in agriculture. Um, agriculture is another one that has huge number of variables. Um, so it's very difficult as a farmer, you know, you're, you're pretty much half of your job is just power color and line. Uh, just putting your trust in Allah because you know there's a rainfall, you don't know when it was going to rain, how much is going to rain, which direction the breeze is going to blow. You don't know the prices. If you know that prices of rice will be most expensive, then you will technically plant rice versus maize. Um, so there's all those variables that you really cannot really project ahead of time. And uh, you know, you just have to be able to work with that level of ambiguity, and that's also.
one very core thing that we are, we are trained you know, to be able to do things that we all are with us. Um, I think one works and this learnings and this will be engineers. Uh, the moments where we see ourselves as managers, we see ourselves as resource uh, optimizers, we see ourselves as people that can make change happen and create value rather than defining ourselves into a box as engineers. I think that's the beginning where we then see how we can very well apply our skills, apply our talents, apply our imaginative capacities to creating wealth and driving innovation. Thank you, uh, Brother Gaffer. I think that I, I, I think that's about twenty minutes, and then we'll be able to, you know, take on more direct questions. But I would love to leave it on to you and Brother Moidin now. Jazakallah, uh, Brother. Um, that was really, really enlightening because um, I'm also an engineer that is now into accounting and finance, and then um, the journey to was uh, is quite an interesting one. And like you've mentioned. Um, it's quite easy for engineers to function well in this financing and accounting field because um, you deal with a lot of numbers and a lot of uh, projections, which are things that are right from your engineering master and then from all of the things you've done in school, it makes those things easier for you to do. And like you rightly mentioned, um, a lot of the leaders in um, in these fields are engineers and also we have instances of a lot of partners in professional service firms that had their undergraduate degrees in engineering and now they are world leaders in finance. So um, it's quite helpful and it's quite um, interesting to hear about your story and it was really, really helpful. So I'll ask people um, if, to keep their questions now, but you can start putting the questions in the Q&A section. Just keep writing the questions down. So after Bo, we did not show takes a session so we can just take all of the questions together, inshallah. Um, so um, the next person that will be talking to us, as like I introduced before, is Brother Muridin Ashu. is the lead application development at Pay Advantage. Uh, Pay Advantage is a fintech company too, and then um, once again, a lot of engineers doing so well in the fields which they've chosen. So Brother Muridin Ashu, please help us. Okay, I'll be like Mashu Tan Rajim Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, yeah, I hope I do so much again, and I thank everybody on this um, platform for um, having me, and um, we thank the organizers too for doing a great job. At this point in time. Um, like um, Brother DJ has said already, that um, he said quite a lot of things, but. The first thing I usually like telling people when I come to this kind of lectures is, you know, just take a look at the your window just outside you there. You see a lot of houses around you, or probably it depends on where you're staying, and um, you find out that these houses are houses that were built using different skills, people doing different things. And um, different things apparently happening for these houses to be built. So I give you one little story of um, a man I had in my area, and um, what this man does was apparently something all of us will say. Well, I, I don't think I'll be interested in doing this apparently. But what does this man do? So anytime I'm coming out for a lot of in the morning, I find out that um, this man is um, <laughs> strange inside the gutter, as is where he's packing sand, as is where. That's the job this man was doing for over 25 years. I mean, the person I'm talking about is about 60, if I'm not making any mistake right now. And this is the job the person has been doing for like 25 years. And, cool. and guess what? Um, like I said with the house story that I said before, this man apparently is a landlord that has built nothing less than two houses as his way. And he has a lot of tenants there. So the meaning of this is that the way Almighty Allah has created us is that we are all diverse, and um, um, in our diversity is what is going to bring about development in our lives and um, things like that. Now, um, for the, um, the whole Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also told one of his companions that um, when he came to beg that he needs he had some money, he actually made the companion understand that you do not beg for money, and he gave him a formula to do a business. And um, that particular companion became one of the richest companions in the history of Islam. So it's something that we um, 
need to know that our ways are very, very, very diverse. I mean, if we look at it very well now, we talk about the Ashwa Jews of today. Ashwa Jews is somebody that read accountants, uh, accountancy or accounts as it were. We talk about um, different people. Even our president is, a, is from the army as it were. So it lets us know that um, we really, even if some of us have apparently um, work in the engineering field or have our career path defined by the engineering field, the truth is um, we'll do probably one or two businesses that are outside engineering. And um, it's sure that at any point in time, we'll be doing something else as well. So um, the truth of the whole matter is that um, our ways are very, very diverse. And the earlier we start um, doing or thinking about those diversifications, be far much um, better for each and every one of us. So um, for people like me, what apparently led to my own story. So well, um, for this lecture, there are three ways majorly in which people apparently change their career paths. Like some of us will have known properly. Um, I was in mechanical engineering, as it were. I can see some of my people online right now, as it were. Um, yeah, but some things apparently pushed me to say that, fine, OK, I'm not. I'm not too sure there's something wrong in what I'm apparently doing as it were. I know that there was anything wrong, really, but um, you have to understand your person very, very well in whatever you are doing. And you have to be able to tell yourself the truth at any point in time that it's time for me to either stay or move. Like um, DG said, he lets, <laughs> and some of us will have known that in our time as um, engineering students, especially on the campus, um, we faced um, um, a whole lot of challenges, let me put it that way. Um, ranging from, you know, it, it was so bad that we did a test. Let me just let me put this to us. We did a test at a point in time. We all saw that um, the answers we got were the same as the lecturer's own, as it were. However, most of us got um, like three over 20, two over 20 in this test, not because of anything, but the lecturer just said that, um, we did not use his own formula. So, you know, and the answers were the same. You know, we all thought, you know, this is a very simple question and things like that. But the lecturer just told us, he gave us the uh, marking scheme that he apparently used. And we find out that, you know, something that was meant to take just seven lines and you get the answer. He wrote about two pages and he told us that because we did not follow his own style, um, that's why we all failed that particular, or most of us failed that test as it were. So um, I had to like ask myself some questions, you know, when things were apparently not going right, you know, confidence was low and all this kind of things that am I too sure, um, well, um, where I think I should be. And um, that forced me, you know, when I was attending some lectures, just like usually attended lectures in the about somebody talking about um, information technology, I was like, what is this information technology that they're making noise about? And, you know, they talked about the side balloons and things like that. So I was like, okay, well, what's this not about? So, you know, that's what apparently pushed me there. So I decided to do some trainings. I saw that, okay, fine, this place is, well, okay, looks nice and looks like, um, but I like solving problems and, you know, it looked like um, it was flowing on what I was apparently thinking about. So at the end of the day, I just um, decided that it looks as if this would, best, it would be the way to go, as it were. So mine was actually a voluntary kind of movement. But there are some other ways in which people um, move to different career paths, as it were. So we also have, um, I experienced some things at the point in time, like an enforced movement, sort of, because I usually like um, database, as it were, before I got to where um, I was going to serve, and they told me, look, um, we are doing online database here, you know, we are doing um, web programming and things like that. At the end of the day, I was forced to go and learn what web programming was all about, as it were. So in those kind of situations, you have it that, you know, you are forced to move to those kind of, uh, you are forced to move to, and both move your career path from what you are apparently thinking before to and nothing else again. And our case is um, this COVID-19 of an issue as well. Okay, like I'm sure we have a night program, but we'll probably have a hall and everybody is going to be seated down there and, you know, treating ourselves, you know, be happy that we've seen us quite some time right now. And, you know, of course, I would have loved to see people like um, um, DG and people like uh, Mr. Sobor and things like that. Because it's been quite a while since I saw some of them. But today, COVID-19 has pushed us to this condition that 
we have to begin discussions online. If we really are interested in um, making progress as at this point in time, we'll probably not be able to organize a gathering more than, you know, the number of people that are here, we know <laughs> if we organize the gathering now, we all know what the government is going to do to all of us. But the most, um, the point I'm trying to drive here is that we need to know that um, this is a conditional thing and um, it may last and it may not last. So um, for all of us, as it were, anybody that is going to change his career path, there are some things that you need to look at. You might be forced to change your career path. Um, you might do it voluntarily, like some of us did it voluntarily. And um, you might be forced to do this um, as part thing, especially for us that, you know, we've gotten to work somewhere. And um, at the end of the day, they tell you, look, this job is not what you are thinking of. You have to do this and do that and do this and do that. And of course, when we start progressing, we start thinking of um, management and um, things like that. So, you know, we're moving to a whole new level entirely. However, there are some things that we need to do when, um, if we decide to apparently move our career paths. There is um, no, just like um, DJ has said, there is no, there, there are some things that we apparently want to gain from having any career path, whether it is engineering or it is not engineering. Now, um, one of the major things that we need to gain is fulfillment. You know, I love solving people's problems. You know, I, I just I just love it. So, you know, some of us might have known me very well for that. I don't like um, seeing situations whereby I will not be able to have an impact in bringing solutions to that to you know, from where I went. So we too need to look at ourselves. What exactly do I like? I have a friend that um, did some of the courses that I did when I was going to move, as it were. And um, um, he said the first day, you know, he was going there because he felt, um, you know, when I get there, they said there's money in this field. So when I get there, you know, I'm going to be making all the money and things like that. You know, he got there and he came back to tell me, he said, look, um, within, um, I made a big mistake even thinking of going for this training, as it were, and so because I can see that you know this person doesn't like maths, and you know he was going for a programming, he was going for a programming class and things like that. So when they were just telling him you do this addition, you do this function and things like that, it was just like we are on earth am I? And so, so but we need to know ourselves very well and look at the career path in which we um, want to um, move to, as it were. So the, but the most important thing to me when we're having any movement is that we should just pray to Allah to always guide us. I think we have the Yusuf that is there. Um, the old Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave that very long dua, of course. Um, that's not, that's not um, the major thing that I want to discuss today. But the most important thing is, please, let's always do is to pray to Allah. That Allah should guide us. I think that's the most important thing. And Allah is always ready for us anytime we call on him. And um, the next question I always... I always tell my people that you ask yourself, if you, you have to ask yourself, why exactly am I moving or changing this career path as it were? You need to be sure that where you are going to, you are going to fulfill. Like I said, the man that was digging, the man that is digging sand today, up there today, is the man that is fulfilled in this field. In fact, it has no competition because um, nobody wants to go into the gutter with him and go on. The, the man can tell you where the best sand is around the area, and forth, but that is what is fulfilled doing. And you know, he doesn't have any issues doing that. He wakes up as early as six o'clock and he's doing his job. And at the end of the day, before 10, he's finished and he knows where he's going to sell the sand to. So he feels fulfilled doing his job. Now, we have to get fulfilled doing our own job. And of course, we have bills to pay too. So we have to um, always try to see that anywhere we are going to pay our bills, you know, because if you are not paying your bills at the point in time, you are going to get, uh, you are going to get into um, a pleasant situation which we don't like to find ourselves. And um, number three is also, is also that uh, we have to look at the value proposition of where we are going. I apparently went to taxation um, at a point in time. I did um, quite a number of things on taxation. And it made me realize that, okay, fine. Um, I like being vast in, my, in the level of knowledge that I have. It made me look at, kind of, oh, so there are still some other fields that are apparently a bit different from engineering. You, know, you have one theory interpreted two ways by two different people. and um, uh, telling you that it's the same, and uh, they will tell you that both of them are right. Sorry, now you are telling both of them are right. Don't know. I come from a science background that you know when you are doing calculation, you are either getting the right answer or getting the wrong answer. So, but you know, finance and then um, taxation, you are telling me that both of them are right. I mean, <laughs> both of them can't be right as far as I'm concerned. And so, but when you get to that field, you you let you know why both of them are apparently right as it were. So, um, we need to um look into 
wherever we think we want to go and you know it makes us um, fulfilled again is that we need to um understand the field in which we are apparently going to you know um and to understand whatever field that we are going to we need to go through uh, quite a lot um number one is um we need to study whatever field we are going into it's very very important that we study the field in which we are going into there is no harm in telling yourself straight out of the bat that um, look <laughs> this field is not meant for me there's no harm in telling ourselves that that's the truth of the matter number two is that um we need to ask a lot of questions in which um yeah, about the subject or from subject matter experts about where we are apparently going into now you have a lot, whole lot of people doing trading some will do trading and um, interestingly not do well there but some will do trading and excel very very well there some will do marketing today and you know they excel there and you know they're very happy doing what they're doing while some of us do marketing and look at look i can't be walking around the whole place and things like that so at the end of the day, the most important thing is, you know, study this particular area and tell yourself yes or tell yourself no. The most important thing is get a path that you're fulfilling, you're providing value to people, and of course, you are getting um, some, you are getting to pay your bills. I think that's most important. And number three is that, you know, we might need to go through some professional training as, as it were. You know, you go to any field, you know, they tell you, even in taxation, you have different things that you need to learn and things like that. Um, even in our engineering too, we have a lot of things that we need to learn and things like that. So we need, we may need to go through professional courses in any career path in which um, we have apparently chosen. And it way, then at times we may need to work for free for people, um, just work for free for some time, just to gain some level of experience because experience is something that you cannot buy in the market. As it were, um, you have to just go through it. As it were. Um, yeah, number four is that um, you always have to test yourself. You have to test ourselves and look at, evaluate ourselves. Where am I at this point in time? Am I okay with what I'm doing? Um, have I gotten to the level in which I'm, I can say that really okay? I'm really confident that you know uh, I'm getting fulfilled on this particular path, or am I just um, uh, sadly wasting my time on this particular path? So you know, if you're testing yourself regularly, you'll find out that okay, fine. I think I'm apparently good here. And please, let's all also be good listeners, as it were. So, you know, when you're listening to people, people apparently tell you where you are apparently doing well and then where you are apparently not doing too well, as it were. So, you always have that room for improvement in any um, other field that in which we have apparently chosen. Now, um, another thing is that, you know, in any field we've chosen, we should know that we are going to fail in some instances. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a cost, apparently. Um, it's something that is going to happen to us, you know, like a toddler that is a baby that wants to walk. Of course, when he stands up, you know, one leg, one day will fall down, another day will stand up, hold chair, and things like that. So the process in which we are apparently going to get fulfilled, whatever we're doing, also has to go through this process, and we have to be ready to go through that process. Um, we should never look at it like, look, I'm an engineering graduate, and, you know, and uh, this particular field is apparently wasting my time. If it's something that is going to fulfill your own dreams, there is no need, for, for my own point of view, there's no need for you to say no to that particular field. As it is, or as it were, um, we are still going to do very probably businesses and things like that that are not necessarily in the field that we are doing. So we really have to be sure that, and we really have to be sure that um, we are doing what we are meant to do, and we really have to be happy doing those particular things. We have to be convinced that this particular part is where I want to be and I should be. And um, I have to know that for me to be able to gain traction on this particular path, then I will fall a little, I will fail a little, but just like the Chinese would say, if you fall seven times, the most important thing is that you stand up eight times and you keep working. Um, at the end of the day, you get to where you're going and that is um, the most important thing as far as I am concerned. So, but don't let us forget, just like um, it was said by one of our lecturers yesterday, that even the prophets of Allah, they were all given, um, they all have different career paths in which they are choosing. They all have different businesses in which they were doing. They all have um, different professional professions in which um, they were apparently working on as it were. So, um, just like Allah has created the prophets and they have made them human beings like us, which we are also going to go through this particular journey in which we have to just um, pick a specific path at, at the end of the day. So um, just like I said again earlier, if you look at the buildings outside, 
the people that built them, built them through different means. And I think um, it would be a good way for me to end us at this point in time. So, Brother Shabalo, just I want to come to our question. Um, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Zakala Kiran to Brother Moedin for bringing justice to that conversation. Um, just like we started the conversation, which we just want to um, get to hear from people that have moved from engineering to other fields and they are doing really well. People have shared their stories, uh, which are quite enlightening. Um, I think one of the um, issues that we have at times is um, the engineer, the Nigerian factor too, because um, most for me the main reason why i left engineering basically was because i couldn't get an engineering job as soon as possible although i finished like top of my class but you'll see that engineering factor there that in the market of nigeria that there were not as much jobs as possible and i did the job i did at that time i applied for that job i did at that time just to get a general understanding of how interview works and how um tests work i my intent at that particular point was not to do the job as a full-time job that I was going to be doing. I just wanted to do it to know how interviews work and how tests work. So I did all of the stages, about four stages or so. They were quite challenging. I was like, really, for this job? And the more challenges that come with the interview, I took them on and I got the job. And the funny, the interesting thing, like what you mentioned with that reading was that uh, uh, I could see a career path when I started the job at the first week of joining the job from the training, from the um, onboarding events that you have, there was a clear career path that this is where you are ending up um, after some or so, so, so years. And after a year, this is where you get to, and these are the things you get to learn. And the path was just very, very defined, which was something I was missing from engineering where I was coming from. I was not quite sure what I was going to be in five years as an engineer. Maybe I was just going to be in the same thing. But it felt like this new role was going to be giving me, um, was, was going to be challenging me, and uh, I was seeing where I was going to be in some years. So I think one of the factors in Nigeria again is that uh, we don't have as much engineering companies that as as defined as that, unless you are working with, say, an IOC company or one of those global companies that is really, really have defined career paths. Really, that you say oh, this is where you are, and this is in five years, and six years, and ten years time, this is where you'll be. So those uncertainties in career development and career path also uh, create one or two things that really uh, confuse one as a professional. But on the Lord, the, ex uh, the experience has been interesting and uh, moving from um, one firm to another to has quite an enlightening one. So uh, the next part of our program now is going to the Q&A section. I know people have been dropping a couple of comment questions um, in the Q&A. I think the first question is for Brother um, Deji Balogun. So the question is, um, when do you decide to change your career path? What factors are up for consideration before changing career path? Can I guide? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think I, I sort of uh, touched about how, you know, the first point for me where I changed is the point where I felt like there wasn't a lot of um, opportunities around the areas of engineering I love to. Most of the opportunities out there in the engineering field were more um, technology roles rather than engineering roles. So maintenance rather than design. Now, um, but I still clinged on to it and I think the final straw was the fact that I just realized more and more that every engineer eventually becomes a manager. So rather than go through that long path, I just wanted to shunt it and become a manager from the beginning. Uh, but when you want to factor it, I also mentioned three things as um, potential things that you should consider. There are quite a lot, but three things sums it for me. One was the growth potential. Second is the fulfillment. And third is the cash. Um, our fulfillment touches, are you satisfied with the role? Does it, you know, is it what you like to do? Um, does it, you know, is it supportive of your family structure and family uh, values, your religious values? And that's for me is a very broad part of it. Um, and then growth, uh, then lastly, uh, cash. Um, but there are so many things that you could consider location, geography, what is available for, you know, the job can transfer you to another function. Sometimes you naturally just grow out of engineering function. So there are different things that could 
depending on the situation. I just have to ask around brother for that. I think the other comments, we, we have another comment here from um, from a brother, brother Nuruddin Otun, says, Salam, we need to separate between acquisition of knowledge and application of knowledge. The difficulty is our ability to manage between both and also know at what point to make that life-changing decision. The bottom line is always to feed our dreams daily. I think um, Brother Ashu mentioned something about that earlier too, because at the end of the day, like he mentioned, um, whatever you decide to do, you should always uh, try and have that drive there. So I think I'll be asking Bro, within Ashu, just based on that comment, that what really drives you on your current role, like for people to change role, and then what keeps driving you on that road? Because at, at a point, if you just try keep doing the same thing, it just gets to a point really that you might lose the drive and feel like, oh, why did I even leave engineering in the first place for this? Now I've lost the drive. What, what keeps driving you to keep doing what you are yeah, doing? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, thank you so very much. Um, so the major thing that drives one is um, interest, as at this point in time for me. When you're interested in the particular field and you love doing what you are doing, I mean, even if you do not do it a day, like um, developers like myself, as at this point in time, would tell you that, you know, if you don't program in one day, you know how it feels on your body as it were. And of course, if you don't do the things you like in a particular day, you know how it apparently, you know, you feel, you don't feel fulfilled for that specific day or for that specific period. So I think the major thing that drives it is the issue of um, interest as it were. The moment you have that huge amount of interest in whatever you're doing, um, you tend to just, you know, whatever obstacle comes on that particular part, you just push it aside as if it never even happened as it were. You know, the job may be very, very difficult to some people. You know, I have some people that just, you know, when I spoke to some of my friends that um, were even computer scientists as it were, they just told me I program, yeah, no, 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 I don't even like that, ah, no, no, I can't go that direction. However, at the end of the day, found out that, you know, this is what I like doing. I like solving simple problems and go. And, you know, as it just makes you continue to move. Now, when it gets to some um, specific fields too, and go, maybe you know, when I was doing, I'm still apparently doing taxation as it were, I just find out that, you know, the same problem solving skills that I love, that I like doing, I can also bring it on when it comes to my own field, my other field of taxation as well. In some other fields too that, you know, I have had to delve into my virtue of maybe you want to do an application for them and things like that. I find out that it's just that interest that pushes you forward day after day. People complain, people say a lot of things, this field is too difficult and things like that. However, you don't look at it as anything serious because you have the interest in doing that particular thing. It's what makes you get fulfilled, and that is why you keep going on that particular path. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Akira, for that. Um, the next question we have, I think, um, Deji Balog will also be taking this. Is um, Tron has asked that what are the challenges related to changing from engineering to other non-engineering careers? How are you able to work on them? I just tried an answer to that. Actually, in my view, nothing. There's, there's absolutely nothing. Um, there's no challenge, really. It's the, the, the biggest thing holding us back is our fear, our fear for change. Um, and then we rather stay in that comfort zone rather than take the leap, um, you know, with the uncertainties that come with it. Um, for me, I, I see nothing um, that holds us back. You know, fear for learning, fear for change, fear for starting all over again, fear for the uncertainties. Besides that, nothing. All right. Thank you, Zach Clark. And so, uh, I think the last question that we'll be concluding this section, which is uh, from the ice cream asking, would you advise one stick to a job for focus and growth instead of having side gigs, which can bring about distractions? How many vehicle of income would you advise? I think we we'll are not sure if you take this question. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, the, for me, um, you always have to have, particularly in the kind of society in which we are right now, you always have to have your side incomes coming in. And you have to have them in, in 
in, in bucket fulls or plenty fulls, as it were. Angote today has over 80 sources of business, 80 sources of income. And for, you know, I met um, one of my mentors in um, the forex markets, as it were. He was telling me he had over 20 something um, sources of income, as it were. So, that you have different sources of income does not necessarily mean that you will be distracted. Because, as it were, anything can happen at any point in time. Take, for instance, this COVID 19, as it were now. Nobody envisaged at this time that, you know, we will be getting locked down in one or two rooms or in one or two houses and be having, um, you know, online meetings and things like that. But the truth is, it has happened. And some businesses have been adversely affected by the COVID-19. Okay, let me give you an instance now. Let's assume the only thing you were doing was the airline business, as it were. The airline business at this point in time is close to getting to zero, as it were. So, if the guys that were doing this airline business did not have other sources of income, you know, it's going to be it's not going to be something interesting, as it were. So, for me, you are meant to have more than one source of income, as it were. Now, the other thing is like when you come to issue of issues of um, the only the only other issue that I see there is the issue of how you manage the whole situation. You have two or three sources of business uh, or two sources of income. And you are still doing, you still have your own career path in which you have to follow. Now you have to get yourself properly organized so that you'll be able to manage the situations very, very well. And maybe that's where um, DJ was apparently talking about um, management and um, things like that. You have to get yourself organized and know how you are going to manage these situations very well. But for me, you should not have only one source of income. For me, it's highly dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're almost running out of time, but uh, if you allow, I would I'd like to just add a word there. Yeah, 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 please. Uh, I, I actually have, um, you know, very, very interestingly have, have an opposite view. I'd like, you know, social, social sciences, they, that there's no right or wrong answer, which is why I also love it. Um, you know, I feel like you should focus for growth and for me growth is extremely important especially at the first half of your career so between uh you know sort of 20, a lot of us get into the world by career world by around 25 till we are sort of 35 40 um depending on how things go for you um so i mean focus a lot of on, on growth and just be able to by 30 35 get into management by 35 going to 40 be in serious management if you choose if you're in entrepreneurship again drive and build for skill um that's first my view now i also feel like you know over time over your career and as you grow you move from a point where you're pretty much just cash flow and show, you know moving from one month to the other uh pretty much uh with some minor then you move to the point where you now start saving. Then you move to the point where you now start investments. Um, a lot of people argue that say start investment from the beginning, but again, I will start doing all that side businesses. And one of the things I always question is, have you valued your time? Agriculture is one of the things where a lot of people say, you know, I have a small farm, I have, you know, uh, 200 fish lins, and, uh, and and this is what I do all my weekend and i'm like you know if you're earning 500k your normal job that's probably about 40k on a daily basis uh, or 30k on a daily basis will this job pay you that much um and you know i beg sometimes i differ sometimes i say yes absolutely invest but there's also a part of your life that you just have to be saving and there's a part of life where you just have to pursue career growth Uh, sir, Clark, and brother, um, I think we still have from, uh, about three more questions. Uh, people are still dropping questions, but uh, I don't know if the facilitators or still have time to take those questions. If you allow, um, just to, I think, five minutes, we'll take those questions and then we'll round up the session, if you don't mind. Okay, no problem. You can go ahead. Um, so, um, next question What is the best way for young engineers to expand their professional network? Uh, I think both the developer. Yeah, for me, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the easiest and cheapest way. 
LinkedIn, just spend a lot of time, write things that are meaningful, um, add people as you can, deem fit wherever you want. That's the most, you know, the easiest and the most meaningful. All right, so, uh, so I'll be saying that people can also check you on LinkedIn, that's it, and then add you. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. <laughs> What about me I think you wanted to add one thing there. Uh, yeah, but um, one uh, one more thing that one more thing that I need to add is that um, you know, as a young engineer, when you're starting your career, I would at the back of your mind that um, you will have to you be prepared to learn. I think that's the that's the most important thing I need to say now. Prepare to learn and learn is just like I tell most of the people that come into civil service and want to speak with me, I just tell them, look, the most important thing for you to do at this point in time, forget about money as at this time. What you should do is that learn it to the extent that anybody that wants to think of this profession thinks of only you. you. And when you know it up to that level, you start adding value. The sky is the beginning. Voila. Thank you. So the um the next question: What happened with your passion when your passion drives your choice of occupation that is not paying your bill? So basically, what well, if, if you have a passion that is not paying your bill, how do you go about it? If you're 18, congratulations. If you're 25, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> um. So basically, does that mean the person should change that passion to something else that the person might not like that will be bringing in? Money? So passion, purpose, profit, those three P's um, are essential. You need them to move together. I mean, so different people have different views around this. I, have, I, I believe you can find passion in anything you do, literally in the niche you do, the problem you're solving, you can find passion. Uh, but a lot of times we, we get to that stumbling block and then uh, the fact that we, you know, you may not get connected in one thing you do, and then you may move to something else, right? Uh, but I actually don't argue that it's only one thing that you can only get connection with. That's the point I don't agree with. But I, I do agree that you may be doing something and it just bores you and you don't want to do that and you can find something else. So, you know, that's a flip for me. Um, but I, I think that you can find purpose, passion, and profit in anything you do. Thank you. And then the, the last question now. Um, would you support enhancement of LASSO engineering syllabus to reflect the present day and future reality? I think yeah, I support scrapping yeah, your well, syllabus. Well. I support scrapping your <laughs> syllabus. Like, like, it's just... <laughs> 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 Literally, the only thing you learn out of the university, in my opinion of today, is how to ask questions. That's <laughs> absolutely the only thing you learn, um, in my view. Mwidin, what do you think? Yes, straight out of my head, yes. Um, the syllabus has to change. Because, you know, it's not reflecting the realities of this time at all. It's not reflecting the realities of this time at all. You know, we still have to do quite a lot. For a lot of us, we still have to do quite a lot outside the shores of school to get things done. So for me, it's not, um, it's not, it's, it's not it at all. You know, the whole syllabus just needs to be... Okay, well, I want to say something about the educational sector before, but I don't know. There are some teachers here, so they might get angry with what they say. But the whole education, the whole education syllabus for me, for me has to be, you know, we, we can't be working with most of the things that we are doing at this time. It's just, um, it's just not it at all. It's just not it at all. Yeah, for yeah. the teachers, I'm sorry, you know, you know. Um, uh, you know, we did a lot of solving of X and Y in school and things like that. You know, do some of the Yeah, yeah, they're important, of course, as it were. But you know, doing some of those things till your final year. You know, when you came back, you still started doing all these calculations and things like that. When you've seen that the realities outside are totally different from X and Y. So <laughs> for me, the the whole syllabus just needs to. Yeah, I'll say so. I did the MBA 10 years ago, and they redesigned in Lagos Business School. They redesigned the program three times in the last 10 years. Three times, absolutely complete over all of the program. I and mean, we have syllabuses that are 50 year old, and we use those books that are 90 year old. It just doesn't work. Yeah, okay. right. uh, one more thing. One, one more thing to add. You know, just to um, what our appetite a bit is that. Okay, look at the COVID 19 as it is right now. There's a new normal as at this point in time. Whatever the normal is, well, it's going to be defined, well, 
in, in, the, in the very nearest future as it were. However, if we are still going to be teaching what we are teaching in school and think that um, <laughs> that normal is going to fit into it, <laughs> well, the Almighty Allah help us. <laughs> that's what I'll just say. But, you know, generally speaking, the whole thing just needs to be revisited. Just, uh, hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, me tell I'm Japan. Sorry about that. I, I said um somebody sent one final question, I think, now that we are ending with and the first question is for Brodeji, because the person specifically mentioned you said at what point can one decide this career path needs a change? See after five years or a decade. The management keeps saying it will get better after one had left and faced one other field, if jobs keep coming in. Do you think it's a good idea to try career group all over again at 38? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I mean, so my, my rule of what I, and this is no, like, no, no, no rule in life and no formula. I do like a 10 year streak, um, you know, with five year interval. So every 10 years I ha I'm on a path and then I have sort of like five year breaks to say, okay, this is what that five years should look like. And within then they have like sort of annual sort of revisits, but a bit less uh, definitive. And I, I for sure still have a dream of doing something in the medical area. I still have a dream of doing something in agriculture. I still want to have my farm at some point. So yes, so be it. The day you stop learning, the, you, the day you stop growing, you start dying. Exactly, for that. Um, Zakula Karan to the facilitators, uh, to Brother DJ, I'm reading for sharing your, within your wealth of knowledge with us and sparing this uh, time to be with us here. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure yeah. we got the comments you've made on this syllabus. Like you mentioned, we have some lecturers here and uh, it's something last week I can also maybe reach out to you afterwards to get one or two input and then share them with the lecturers too, inshallah. And um, to round up the program, I'll be calling on Brother, um, Abdul Kenny Ali to the Afghan to lead us with the closing door. No. Zakumullah Khairan. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salatu wa rasulillah. We give thanks to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Afghan idols this far. For every of the discussion, those that will take taking note of either orally or to put it down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to implement. For the discussion, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them and continue to be guide them more wisdom in order for them to lead us more and more in this world. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the entire GC and the entire Las Vegas for this wonderful opportunity that they have given to everyone of us in order for us to at least upgrade ourselves in what we should. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to ensure that we have unity amidst us and to be able to do Muhammad. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da iz hadithana wa hab lana min ladunka wa matainaka mtalbu wa hab. Allahumma inna auna udrika min alhami wal hudna wal ajzi wal kasal wal bukhli wal jubn wa dala'a al-dayni wa galabati ujadi. Allahumma inna nas'alka al-afwa wa al-afiya fi al-dunya wa al-akhira. Allahumma inna nas'alka al-afwa wa al-afiya fi al-dunyinina wa dunyana wa ahlina wa malina اللهم استر عورتنا وآمن روعتنا اللهم انفحنا من لين يدينا ومن خلفنا وعن يمينا وعن شمالنا ومن خوفنا ونعود بعظمتك أن أكفال من تحتنا اللهم إنا نعود بك من الكفر والدين اللهم إنا نعود بك من الكفر والدين اللهم إنا نعود بك من الكفر والدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وألدا صالحا اللهم اغفر لنا والإخواننا الذين صدقون ولا تجعل في قلوبنا جل للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ربنا أدخلنا مدخل صدق وأخرجنا مخرج صدق واجعل لنا من لدنك سلطانا مصيرا سبحانك اللهم حمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستكفرك ونتبين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله
جزاك الله خيرا 